Yes, uh, greetings everyone, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to share this from President Timo Seven and also from Professor Pierre Lumumba. Uh, how we can make Africa uh, strong, how we can be respected in this world. Listen uh, a little bit from President Timo Seven and then to Professor Pierre Lumumba. The UN group, I, I, I don't think they were clear because, you know, they, they are, it's like a theater. You go, they give you five minutes. I, I can't come from Uganda to want to speak for five minutes. As if I am in a theater. That's why I, I don't go to those meetings anymore because they, they are not they, 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 I, I don't have time for... If you, if, you want to be, if you want to listen to me, you better be prepared to listen carefully. Not come for five minutes and then I, I, I show myself, go away, having flown in a Gulf Stream. Imagine a Gulf Stream. A huge plane from here. The United Nations Organization will be meeting this week in New York, New York. All countries and their leaders will be given an opportunity to speak for a few minutes. When most African countries will be speaking and you look at the audience, there will be very few. But when the President of the United States of America speaks, whether you like him or not, people will be there. He or she who has food, even when he smiles or sneers, it means the same thing. You must laugh because he can dish out food. When the leaders of Europe will be there, it will be all, oh, everybody will be there. But when my good and learned friend, Professor Peter Wamutarika, will be speaking a few Africans and a few others will be there or may be there it tells you that we are lightweight in the world when the real decisions are being made they now reduce it from 100 plus countries into what is called the Security Council and in the Security Council, Africans do not have a permanent seat. You have a rotation of membership. And in the Security Council, only five countries, which matter, have a veto. In other words, all the countries of the world can say many things, they can vote many times, but Russia has a card which they come with and they say veto, and all your votes are neutralized. Useless. <laughs> That is where Africa is. When meeting, uh, meetings are called, they have another level of meetings called the G20. G20 nowadays, you find the president of South Africa, I think, occasionally the chairman of the African Union, of President Sisi will be there. But the real meeting is the G7. At the G7, they will invite a few Africans and one of the things that you normally see at the G7, the African leaders who are invited will be at the photo uh, when they start. <laughs> Once the photo has been taken, you will never see them again. At all. Why? Because in the scheme of things, Africa does not matter. That is why aspiration number seven of Agenda 2063 says where well, Africa will be strong and will be an integral part. Yes, my dear kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from uh, President Yoeri Kaguta Museveni of Uganda and also from Professor Pielo Lumumba. My question is how we can make Africa strong, how we can make Africa respected. For Africa, uh, heads of states to be given only five minutes 
to address uh, at the UN according to President Tim Seven, while they have traveled a lot of miles is disrespecting. And also has pres as Professor Piero Mumba also said about how uh, the world when it comes to great decisions Africa are not represented. Uh, if you look on the uh, UN Security Council that consists of China, France, Russia, uh, UK and the United States of America, Africa is not there. Africa is not represented and this is uh, disrespecting of Africa. Remember Africa is the continent with almost 1.4 billion people but are not represented in the uh, UN Security Council. When it comes to decisions, we remember the decision that has been taken uh, during the removal of Gaddafi. If, just imagine if Africa we have uh, or we are in the member of UN Security Council, it means we will veto the decisions of removing Gaddafi. Uh, even we have to uh, neutralize uh, those decisions. Look at the uh, G7. Yes, maybe you can say Africa we are not developed. Maybe this can, these countries in the uh, G7 are developed. But also Africa, we have resources. When you talk about development, resources, richness, you have to include Africa because many of our resources are coming from Africa. But one thing that I see, and this has been addressed many times, Africa, we are divided. Africa, we are weak because we are not working together. We are not united. Africa, we are divided into separate individual countries. Look at the countries such as Congo, richest resource in the, in, in the world. Look at the countries such as Nigeria, Libya, Tanzania, South Africa. Just imagine if we are united and coming together and say from now we will not go to the UN without being acquired the seat in the UN Security Council. Our resources will not go out. If the world want to trade with us, we should be uh, included in the decisions of this world. But we are not included. We are not included. Of course, recently Africa has, uh, through African Union, have been invited and, of course, not invited, has uh, become a member of the G20. The African Union now is a member of G20. But African Union is sponsored by the Europeans, is sponsored by America. So we have no decisions. So the one who pay the pipe, of course, control the tune. So just imagine the, the ones who are sponsoring us are inviting us. Do we have the say? Always will be under control. So that's why sometimes we say we need African Union that is strong, that can tell the US this is long, that can tell Russia this is long, that can tell China uh, that is long, that can say France, you have exploiting Africa, please pay for what you have did and done in the previous. So, but because we are weak, we are not working together, we are not respected. And for we, the people of Africa, to be respected, and I will conclude by saying this, the only salvation and restoration of dignity and respect for Africa is to come together, to unite. Let us have a single currency. Let us have a um, single army. Let us unite politically. You know what's happening in many continent, in, in, I mean in many countries in this continent, as you see in Kenya, in Sahel, uh, young people running away from this continent, it is because of divisions. There are opportunities in different parts of this continent, but young people and African people have denied access to those uh, resources due to these barriers, visas, and borders. So if we have united, uh, we have borderless continent so if in one country country a there is no uh, enough opportunities the people will shift it to another area 
where they have access to add to 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 to, to opportunities in other uh, or, or in country B. So I think that is how we can uh, create prosperity to our continent. Look how the Europeans are doing. They are free to move from one place to another. They can have lunch in Paris and dinner in Brussels that, and without being asked, come to Africa. To move from one place to another, it is difficult. To move within our continent, you have to go out of our continent then to go back. If you want to go to the west, from east, you have to go first in Europe, then you go back to how is it possible? Why we can't move around our continent? May people may say maybe security issues. Who will bring these security issues? Who will make Africa is secured? It's with the people of Africa. So for how long will we continue to wait? And that's why I'm saying our leaders should convene a meeting, an urgent meeting on how they can come together. The way the Chinese are convening meeting when they want resources to Africa, the way the Italians are doing, the way the France are doing, the way in recent Koreans are doing, if they want resources to Africa, they summon our leaders. So even we, before being summoned by others, we can summon by ourselves in Addis Ababa, in Nairobi, in Dar es Salaam, in Kinshasa, in Kigali, or in Bujumbula, wherever, in Ogadugu, in Bamako, whether in Dakar, in Lagos, in Accra, wherever we want, in Kampala, in Juba, or in Khartoum, and have a, a meeting about how we, we are going to work together. We have Agenda 2063. How can we at, achieve Agenda 2063? Have we asked ourselves, what can we do to make sure that everyone should be accountable for Agenda 2063? Are we going to achieve Agenda 2063? Now we are talking about continental free trade area. How many countries have implementing Africa continental free trade area? There's free movement of people and goods. Do we have infrastructures for free movement of people and goods? So I'm just trying to imagine myself and thinking myself how we can do better. We are not here for our generation. We are here for the coming generation. What we are doing today will impact whether negative or positive to the coming generation. Our children, our grandchildren, whether we will they will enjoy or they will suffer from what we have done as the previous generation. So kings and queens, let me not speak for too long. Have a nice time. See you next time. Thank you.